Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're going to get started again. Our next mentor is here. Um, and we're super excited to have Andrea Murray with us this morning. Um, she actually works at IBM, who will also have a host booth this after, or in our expo at 11. Um, so, but Andrea is going to tell us a lot about her job, which is pretty cool um, at IBM. So thank you, Andrea, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Brenda. And uh, it's great to uh, see so many of you guys here on the call um, and to, to see everybody very eager to learn about the different career opportunities. So I'm really excited to share a little bit about IBM. Um, and so my role at IBM is called Talent Acquisition Partner. And so basically what that means is that I am a recruiter. So I work at IBM to hire new grads. So my role basically involves, um, I do actually events like this, but uh, more so um, at the university level, the college level, people who have already graduated looking for full-time roles. Um, so I do a lot of events like this. Um, so I do lots of presentations, lots of PowerPoints. I saved you all the trouble today and didn't actually share a PowerPoint today um, because I'm sure you guys have seen a lot. Um, and I didn't want to get into too much about kind of what IBM is. Um, I wanted to more so focus on what I do and some of the other roles that we have. So um, I'll kind of keep it casual and talk about that instead. And uh, I won't uh, I won't bore you too much with uh, with IBM's background and all those uh, all that good information. So um, I do a lot of presentations like this to new grads, college students, university students. And um, basically, I find um, new grads who are looking to join the workforce, looking to get a job at IBM, and I help see if they are a fit for IBM, um, what role they could be a fit for, because we have lots of different roles there. Um, and then I set up their interview for them. And so their interview um, is like a virtual one hour interview. And so I have to find some interviewers on the IBM side. I have to work with the candidate to make sure they're available. Um, and then if the interview goes well, I start to get their offer set up. And there's a, a lot of background HR processes involved with actually getting their offer uh, sent to them and all set up for them. But um, I am basically their main point of contact throughout the whole process from once they get recruited to their start date. Um, and so that is uh, a lot of responsibility on myself with uh, having a good relationship with the candidate because sometimes we could recruit them in September and then they might not start until March or they might not start until June. So I am their main point of contact for them um, until they get started. And then once they get started, they, uh, they'll then report to their manager. So uh, that's a little bit of background about my role. Um, and so I know we have uh, a couple of uh, topics that um, all of the mentors have been discussing. So um, I'll get into those as well. So I'll start with how I got to this role, um, which I'm sure you guys are eager to know how I got from high school to here, um, because I am, I'm only 23. So I uh, graduated high school in 2016. I went to to CPA and then um, I went to SMU right away. I started the following fall and then I took business at SMU. And so the reason I took business at SMU is because in high school, uh, I wasn't the greatest at the sciences. Um, I wasn't, uh, I didn't really enjoy doing chemistry and biology and um, those kind of courses, but I really enjoyed taking um, the business courses that I took as my electives. And so I'm not sure what high schools offer them and, and they might look a little bit different for different schools, but um, I took courses like entrepreneurship, uh, economics and business management and I really enjoyed those courses. And so uh, that's kind of how I realized that I wanted to apply to a business uh, degree at university. And so uh, that took me to SMU. Uh, I did look at all different schools, but I liked SMU because it was close. And so once I got to SMU, there's also lots of different paths you could take within business. So uh, once I went to SMU, um, there's like accounting, finance, marketing, HR, and same thing. I kind of weighed out what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, as you probably can tell, since I didn't like sciences in high school, I also didn't love math. So I didn't really enjoy finance and accounting 
accounting, but I really, really liked marketing and HR. And so I decided to do a, a double major in marketing and human resources. And so uh, that's kind of how I got to this role today um, because a friend of mine actually was hired at IBM. And so she gave me the name of the recruiter and um, I actually just messaged him on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know what LinkedIn is, but it's basically uh, like a social media networking platform. So it's a social media, but it's more so for professionals. It's for looking for jobs, sharing information about your company, uh, sharing articles, things like that. And so uh, it's definitely, uh, I, I encourage you to get one down the road, um, kind of more so uh, after high school and that kind of timeline to help you find some jobs. But I basically reached out to the recruiter who is actually now me. Um, so I reached out to the person who used to be in my job and I met with him for a coffee and uh, we figured out what I liked and a role that I would be a fit for. And then uh, obviously it worked out good for myself because I'm here today. Um, but I actually got hired into a different role when I started at IBM. So uh, when I started at IBM, I started off as a new grad in the project management practice. And so uh, if you don't know about project management, it's basically um, IBM works with clients. And so we work with clients. Um, some familiar names that you guys would recognize are like Air Canada, uh, Sobeys. We work with uh, lots of different banking companies. We work with governments. Um, and so we work with those clients to basically provide an IBM solution to them. And so your role as a project manager is to um, have a really good relationship with the client. And so you work with the client to basically make sure that the project is running on time, it's running on budget. So it's uh, we're not charging the client too much or the client isn't charging us not enough. Um, and that they're, the work that we're providing and the IBM solution that we're providing them is uh, on time and everything is moving slowly. And it's a lot of um, kind of working through any issues, working with teams, uh, really big team teamwork role. So working with lots of people on the IBM side as well as the client side. And so I started off in project management, which is actually one of the roles that I recruit for now. And so uh, once I started off in that role, I was there for about 10 months um, and same thing. I kind of evaluated what I liked about the role, what I didn't like about the role. Um, I really liked meetings and I really liked presentations. And so um, eventually the recruiter that was in my role previously uh, was taking on a new role and he um, that meant his previous role was open. And so since I like doing presentations and I liked working with people, um, I applied for that role. And now here I am. I've been in this role since July. And so if uh, if you're keeping up with my, with my timeline, that means I uh, graduated high school in 2016, graduated university in 2020, and then started IBM at 2020. And then now I'm here at the end of 2021. So it's been just over a year since I'm with IBM. And so I went to two different roles. So I've had, uh, I've had a really good experience and a lot of support from my coach to help me uh, get to these roles. And um, like I said, I already shared about my kind of education background, but I also did a lot of additional training and I did a lot of volunteer work to help me get to my job. Um, and also even to help me get into the university program and also to get my job at the beginning. Uh, in my last role, I did a lot of volunteer work. So um, I joined a lot of societies at university and or college if you, uh, if you choose the path of post-secondary um, or also if you don't, there's lots of community engagement that I did as well. Um, and so that really helped me not only kind of buff up my resume and uh, make me my resume look good when I was applying for things, but it also helped me learn some of those key skills of um, just like doing things like this, having good communication skills, being able to work with people of different backgrounds. Um, and so the different volunteer opportunities I did um, within university, I was in different societies. Um, and then 
then also within high school, which is probably coming up sooner for you guys, um, the different things that I did in high school was uh, I helped out um, with a lot of different events, whether they were um, our sporting events. I did a lot of the uh, volunteer work at different cross country events and uh, different runs around the school, different walks. Um, and then I also did some uh, different other volunteer or kind of extracurricular. I consider it both because there was a, a big reward for me at the end. But uh, when I was in high school, I also took on an opportunity to do a case study challenge at a university. And so that was outside of my high school work. And so I got to go to SMU. I got to see what it could be like. I worked with a team also from high school and other high schools. And so uh, it was a really good opportunity if you ever see any events like that. I, I recommend um, taking advantage of them. I know it's hard to manage time with the course the course load and, and all your work and everything with courses, but uh, if you can kind of manage your time to also have some time to do some extracurriculars, I do uh, highly recommend it. And uh, now speaking from a recruiter's point of view, that is uh, what we look for in an ideal candidate. So um, if you have that kind of stuff on your resume, it looks, it looks really good and you build a lot of those core skills um, outside of your, your typical um, just kind of school work. So uh, that's uh, a little bit about the extra work that I've done. Um, and so I already kind of explained a little bit about uh, how I got here and what my role looks like. Um, so before we get into questions, I'll, I'll share a little bit about uh, the challenging part of my job and then what part I like the most. Um, because obviously with every opportunity you take, there's going to be things that you love and then there's going to be some things that uh, you don't like so much. But the most important part with that is finding a role that there's more of the things that you like and less of the things that you don't like, which is uh, what I found in my role that I'm in today, which I'm very happy and very proud about uh, that I do like, uh, I, I really like all of my parts of my job, except for one main part, which you can probably guess is um, being the one that has to tell candidates that they didn't get the job. And so that's the most challenging part of my job because I am somebody that really likes to help people and sometimes um, I'll get carried away in helping everybody. So I have to kind of uh, step back to realize like my role is working for IBM, finding talent for IBM. And unfortunately, as much as I would love to, I can't help every single person. So um, the challenging part is having to tell people that they weren't selected for the role um, and a way that I found that I best kind of overcome this, this feeling that I really didn't like about telling people that um, they uh, weren't lucky with IBM is that I have kind of like some tips that I share with all of my candidates who uh, didn't get the role to help them on their next job hunt. And so since I since I mentioned, I really like to help people. Um, so this is one way to kind of make me feel like I am still helping them and I am still helping them get along in their career journey. And so I share some tips with them about uh, how they can change up their resume or some feedback from their interview, what went well, what didn't went well, um, so that they can improve from there and help find another job. Even though that other job unfortunately won't be with IBM, it'll still help them on their career journey. And so um, that is the most challenging part of my job, but the best part of my job is being able to give new grads uh, some employment opportunities and also doing events like this. I really enjoy going to campuses, meeting new people, as I'm sure you can tell with the background that I've shared so far, I work with new people every single day. So uh, that is a really good part about my role where I get to um, meet with people and I get to do different things every single day. My work is very dynamic. And so uh, that is something that I really do like about my role. And um, that uh, that kind of balance that I have with the liking more of my role and kind of having the, the small part that I don't like is uh, at the end of the day uh, aligns kind of with my values of, of helping people because um, I was a new grad um, in 2020. So very recently, so I can really connect with the new grads on a level of being able to understand that the job market is tough and it's really hard to find a job uh, after university or college. So um, kind of being, being able to help them is something that I really enjoy and I've uh, found a lot of joy in within this role. 
And so I know I've talked a lot, so uh, I know we want to have five minutes for questions at the end. So I will, uh, I'll hand it back over to Brenda. And if there's anything I missed or anything else you guys want to ask me, uh, definitely please feel free. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andrea. It sounds like a pretty cool job to get to meet all those people and that type of thing. We do have a question in chat already that asks about the pay scale for a recruiter. Yeah, good question. Um, and so um, I can't share like too, too many details, but I would encourage you to kind of look it up uh, on Google, utilize some of your resources. But I will say, uh, just because I can't share specific numbers, I can definitely share some information about the scale, uh, which is kind of what I'm sure you're most interested in. Um, and so with, uh, with IBM, I recruit people to um, join in as new grads. So they start with a competitive salary. Um, mostly everybody at IBM is on a salary. So uh, if you've learned anything about like hourly wages versus salary, uh, most people are on salary. And so that basically just means every two weeks, your paycheck is the same. And so um, I kind of, like I, I like to say, I started at the bottom. So I started as a new entry, uh, like an entry level role, uh, which is still a really high salary. Uh, it's very competitive with our um, like with the market right now, um, especially with people working from home. And then once I got into the recruiter role, um, I did get um, a, a raise because since I was advancing from a new grad and now into a specialized field. And so I took um, a, a good pay raise from there. And um, like I said, even though I'm at um, I'm a raise from my previous role, I'm still kind of at the bottom of the recruiter chain. So as far as going up to the next pay scale, uh, that will probably be within about a year or two, uh, since I'm only doing uh, new grads and entry level roles right now. Um, eventually, I will also be able to move into recruiting experienced professionals. And so that would mean people that um, have already worked in the field for like five or 10 years. Um, so I would be recruiting them because it's uh, a little bit harder. There's more specific skills. And so from there, I will take another pay increase, um, not only because I'm taking on a new role, but I also have some more specialized skills, um, which obviously are uh, very valued. So there is a kind of within that pay scale, there's lots of kind of advancements and it is based on kind of getting all the skills and then moving to the next one. So um, yeah, if you uh, if you want to kind of know a little bit more about salary details, um, you can kind of uh, Google different things like um, campus recruiters or you can Google like entry level recruiters um, and then kind of Google like senior recruiters and you'll be able to see the different pay salaries from there. So that's my that's my way of hopefully sharing the details without uh, getting in trouble of sharing numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so do you know if there's much demand here in Nova Scotia for recruiters with various companies? Yeah, good question. Um, and the demand is really, really high. So um, as I'm sure you can guess, as a result of COVID, uh, there was uh, a lots of unemployment initially, and then also companies regrowing, and then also companies having to uh, overcome the burden of COVID and uh, especially with Can uh, the Canadian Revenue Agency having to um, like help manage all of the funding and everything like that. So um, recruiters are definitely in high demand. And so that is because uh, we are recruiting for a lot of roles that um, are helping the um, impact of COVID, but also on the other scale, um, there's lots of demand for recruiters because there's a lot more people working online and working remote. And so what that means is that you need a recruiter to be able to um, go over with them like what they can do working from their location versus moving. Um, they may be working in Nova Scotia, but the role might be in Ottawa. And so you need recruiters to find the people that um, either they aren't in Ottawa or there's other people reaching out to them. They have to kind of see like if there's demand for the company that they're working at. And if there is, is, are they allowed to work from their location? Do they need to move? So um, there is a lot more um, kind of tricky parts of recruiting as a result of COVID because a lot of people do want to work from home, do want to work remotely. So um, that is a, a big part of a recruiter's role is because you have to make sure you kind of go over those requirements with them and make sure that they understand their role and that they're okay working remote. So 
yes, lots of demand for us. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of our time. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Are you in the yeah. expo booth this afternoon as well? Yeah, yeah. So we will or, be. I keep saying this afternoon, but I mean at 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be in the next one at 11. So uh, if anyone wants to join in and ask some more questions, I will have uh, a few of my colleagues with me who uh, can share a little bit more about their roles. Uh, some backgrounds about their roles would be um, project managers, uh, software developers, so lots of coding for anyone who has an interest in coding. Um, they'll also have some software testers. So uh, yeah, we have lots of different roles that will be with us, uh, I guess, quite shortly. Um, so if you want to ask uh, some more technical questions and some more questions about different IBM roles, uh, definitely feel free to stop in our booth and we'll have, uh, we'll have lots of people there to chat with you there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Mm -hmm. All right. See you.